I am not applying any stress which means there cannot be strain where we told elastic materials have the property beyond which there is no validity of Hooke's law when certain stress is applied on an elastic body it is the region OA is the region where Hooke's law is valid hello students this is SD sir from the temple of excellence Vidyashram Pre University Mysore. In my first session on the chapter Mechanical Properties of Solids, we discussed about something called elastic behavior of solids. Alba, we studied about the elastic bodies and the plastic bodies where we told an elastic body is a body which can completely regain its shape and size when the external force is removed, a plastic body gets deformed. It does not change its shape and size when the external force is removed. And we studied a very important law called Hooke's law pertaining to elasticity where we told within elastic limits stress is directly proportional to strain now continuing further in my today's class let us study the elastic limit graph which shows the variation of elasticity when a load a certain load is applied to an elastic body So this is the graph that we are talking about which depicts or shows the variation of stress and strain, the variation of elastic limits when a certain load is applied along x-axis we are marking stress along y-axis we are marking stress x-axis corresponds to strain now from the diagram it follows that if the applied stress is zero the strain is also zero. See, if the stress applied is zero, strain is also zero. If the stress is gradually increased, strain increases proportionately till the point A is reached 
and the relation exists between stress and strain in the region OA of the curve. So if you observe here, stress, this is strain. So when the applied stress is zero, strain is also zero, which is the application of Hooke's law. Within elastic limits, stress is directly proportional to strain. I am not applying any stress, which means there cannot be strain. So if the applied stress is zero, the strain developed in the body is also zero. Now, as I increase the stress, the strain also increases proportionately Hooke's law application as the stress is increased linearly proportionately there has to be an increase in strain. The point A corresponds to something called as elastic limit. So A corresponds to elastic limit. Andre, now as you are increasing the stress, the magnitude of stress on the body increases proportionately strain also increases along OA where A is called elastic limit. Thus, it is the region. OA is the region where Hooke's law is valid until OA because he clearly says within elastic limits. Within this region, the body recovers its original shape, original size on the removal of the external force. Only beyond OA, beyond elastic limits, we see that the body cannot regain its original shape or size. So what do we understand? Zero stress, zero strain. As the stress is increased, strain proportionately increases by definition of Hooke's law. OA is the region where Hooke's law is applied. A is called elastic limit. Beyond A, Hooke's law breaks down. Now, beyond A, any, the strain increases faster than in the region OA. Once that elastic limit is reached, OA is reached, beyond that, you don't see the validity of Hooke's law. Beyond that portion OA, stress 
cannot be directly proportional to strain. So strain increases in a faster rate than in the region OA. Most of the strain acquired by the body is now permanent and in this region the body is said to have permanent stress. So these are the features of elastic limit. Very simple. Stress is zero. Strain developed is zero. Increase the stress. Proportionately strain increases. This behavior is observed until the region OA. A is called elastic limits beyond which there is no validity of Hooke's law. Andre, until the region OA, if you remove the applied stress, the body still regains its original shape and size. It is still elastic in behavior. But above that region, which you also call fracture point, the body does not regain its original shape. And beyond OA, the strain developed is much more in any other region. There is a permanent stress developed there. Now, we define elastic coefficients or moduli of elasticity. This is the component behavior of an elastic body which will actually decide how it is used for construction purposes. Elastic coefficients or moduli of elasticity. We say modulus of elasticity or coefficient of elasticity is a ratio. Coefficient means number. Ratio of stress to strain. Any ratio concerned with respect to stress and strain. Stress divided by strain is called moduli of elasticity or coefficient of elasticity. It is of three types. The first one is called longitudinal or tensile strain. Second one is called shearing or tangential strain. How do we define Young's modulus? Young's modulus for a material is the ratio of stress to longitudinal strain. Come and see Ratio of stress to longitudinal strain. Longitudinal strain means change in the length of the body when certain stress is applied on an elastic body 
if a change is happening along its length strain consequence of stress is change in length then it is called young's modulus which is given by the expression n meter minus 2 bulk modulus it is defined as the ratio of stress to volume strain andre now when stress is applied and the change is happening along the volume as a result if the volume of the body is changing that is called bulk modulus young's modulus change in length bulk modulus change in volume and it is stress divided by volume strain stress force by area change in volume and last one rigidity modulus it is defined as the ratio of tangential strength to shearing strain so this is a very small chapter where we studied the elastic behavior of solids where we told elastic materials have the property to regain their shape and size once the external force is removed hooke's law where we told within elastic limits stress is directly proportional to strain nature of the elastic curve the permanent stress point the elastic limit fracture point and the three types of coefficients young's modulus stress divided by longitudinal strain where the change happens with respect to the length of the solid bulk modulus stress divided by volume and rigidity modulus tangential stress to shearing strain in my next session i'll come up with mechanical properties of fluids until then have a nice time thank you